So good morning, everybody. Can we take it that all protocols are duly observed? Um, normally in the world I live in, we have to start first by greeting the front row individually. Um, so I, I won't do that, but I, I will say it's a privilege for me to be here. And thank you to the organizers for inviting me to share some of my thoughts uh, about this. I think influencers are really important people in the work that we try to do around ending poverty and inequality. And young people, and I see a room full of young people, are particularly important in that journey. And really, if you're going to be change makers, influencers, whatever you want to, to say, actually the audience we really want to reach is 70% of this continent and you make up 70% of the continent. And if, whenever I speak, I always say, the youth are the future, but the future is right here, right now. And so you need to grab it. And so first of all, give yourselves a round of applause for being here, because this is important and you are playing a significant role. But who am I? I'm really not, uh, an influencer in the ways in which influencing is described today. Uh, my best following on um, Twitter is 6,000. So I'm down there with the minnows, not really important at all on the scene. Um, but I, I'm going to share some of my perspectives because I think in the work that you do, it's going to be really important that you are engaging with these issues, whatever you decide to do, whether you want to promote Nespresso or you want to change the world, you have a big powerful idea that you really want to influence the world with, I think these things will all help you in what you do. So first of all, what is it? What is influence? I think, personally, that, that influence is the ability to make people do things that they would not ordinarily do in its best form. So let me give you my favorite example. When the walls of apartheid came crashing down in 1994, Nelson Mandela was free. And if you're a black person living in South Africa, you said it's now our turn. We're going to chase these people right out of this town. We're going to really take over South Africa. We're going to run this continent because we're going to run this country because it belongs to us. And a man came along, the man who had been jailed for 27 years of his life by those same people and introduces an idea called the Rainbow Nation, in which everybody gets to coexist. And suddenly, this revenge that you've been filled with for 50 years of oppression, you suddenly have to rethink it from the ground upwards. And you actually do think about it. Because remember, the idea of, a, of an influencer is that you bring an idea, but it's only really powerful if people actually hear it and actually act on it. And so that's your measure. That's, that's your bar, by the way, as you aim for success. It's the ability to influence people, I guess, to do things that if they woke up in the morning, they typically wouldn't do. It wouldn't occur to them to do it, whether it's to buy an espresso instead of drinking their normal Nescafe instant coffee or it's to particularly follow a particular fashion style or approach, or it's to think differently about a problem that traditionally they have thought about in a particular way. And we live in a really complex world uh, at its biggest, and certainly some of the issues that we have to grapple with are what are best described as wicked problems. Wicked problems. We have one that just emerged in this sub-region a few weeks ago. On the one hand, we all believe in democracy. 
And democracy is a powerful and good thing. It gives people choices. And in Ghana, we know this really works very well. But suddenly, we're faced with a coup. First in Guinea, I mean, first in Mali, then in Guinea, then in Burkina Faso, and now in Niger. So, what are we going to do? And we're in the middle of that now, and I'm sure you're all following the debates about are we going to invade Niger? Are we going to talk to Niger? That problem is complex because it depends on where you stand. Um, you will see something different. I don't know how many of you watched a movie called Vantage Point. It follows seven people watching a particular incident and tells you their story. And if you listen to it from those seven people's points of view, you hear totally different stories. So remember, as an influencer, you're trying to stitch together the commonality and get people to a consensus about how they're going to deal with things. So I'm not going to talk about the psychology of influencing. I've, I've seen the people who are on the list. Most of you are super qualified to be speakers on how you do influencing. Um, and so I'll say a few words about that, but actually I'll leave a lot of that and the details and some of the technical stuff to those who are best placed. They always say practice is what actually drives something. If you don't know, talking about something in theory doesn't really make sense. The practitioners will tell you. So I'll share a few thoughts, but I, I really wanted to focus on, so what is it really about? Because I gave you an example of, of leadership, and I think actually influence is leadership. And every leader is looking to influence somebody. And you're not actually a leader until you can influence somebody. And many leaders also have authority. The president of Ghana is a leader who has authority. So sometimes even he doesn't even need to influence you again. Because he has authority, he can tell you what to do. That's not influence. The real influence is when you have no authority whatsoever. You turn up in this room and say to everybody, please, let's leave the room. Please all stand up. Please all sit down. And they do. You have no authority to actually tell them to do this, but you've become influential because you are now able to communicate with them in a way that makes them do something that you suggested for them to do. So really, first of all, you need an audience. And then, of course, you'll have all your enablers. And I'm sure there are lots of people here who talk about technology and the power of technology. I'm going to leave that stuff for them, because actually, they're far more competent. I can't tell you how to improve your Twitter capacity or to reach more followers. But I can tell you about leadership. And so I've chosen to focus on leadership. And this morning, I decided to just look at my social media and see what was on it. And I screenshotted three things from people I think are influential. And bear in mind that we all come from different backgrounds. So one of the people you may find influential, I may not necessarily think they are influential. But let me share those screenshots. Let me share the first one. And it's really important because what I, what I want to talk about then is what do you need to have? What are the ingredients you need to have to be a, a, a leader and an influencer? And I'm going to stay with today's theme to create an unparalleled journey to the future. Because if that's what you're really aiming to achieve in your work and ultimately get paid for it, then, then that's what you need to have. So I actually saw one of my friends on Twitter this morning, and she said to that guy, sorry, I'm Nigerian, by the way, so sometimes my examples will come from Nigeria. She said, Ogami, but we can, we can have an arrangement. And I said, what, what the hell is she talking about? So I went back to the Twitter feed to look for what, what she was responding to, and I saw a comment from Joe Abba. So Joaba is somebody who has like a million, nearly a million followers. Started out, we're pretty much peers in Korea, but he's become what I call an influencer. 
So here's what he tweeted this morning at 9 o'clock. He said, sometime someone said I should go and register for Twitter monetization. Unblock all the people I have blocked. Say something really controversial or silly. Get dragged for days, which will result in a lot of impressions and engagements, and then get paid by somebody or the other. You don't reach like that. That was his, his tweet this morning, right? So I guess it speaks to the first um, thing that I really think. I'm going to just list a few qualities and try and speak faster than I would normally speak on this matter. The few, the ingredients that I think you need to have if you're going to be an effective influencer. And I think they're called to something somebody else may use. They'll talk about brand. What's your brand? But I think these things are the invisible things that actually go towards making your brand. So the first one is you need a purpose. Why? Why am I, why am I doing this thing? Am I joining it because I hear say people, they make money? Is the people make money from this thing, so I better find my way, grow my followership. By the way, that leads me to the second um, thing I, I saw this morning. Somebody sending stuff around about a place called Bridge, Breezy's uh, Beach Resort. And the thing ends with, I beg, please follow our page so we can increase awareness. <laughs> So he's doing some marketing and he believes that the more people who follow, the more it will come into the stream. That's all the technical stuff. But at the end of the day, he's not saying, come here because this is an amazing place. He's saying, come, just follow me because of that my increase. So already, why am I doing this? And the moment you do this, I'm not really going to follow you and take you seriously because you don't even know why you're doing it. So what's your why? And you need to ask this question really about yourself. And by the way, there's no fixed answer. Your why will change as your life changes and as your sense of purpose changes. The one thing I can tell you right now is it won't be because I want to make money. It will be because I want to achieve something. I want to create something. I want to change something. I want to do something different. And I always say to people, Money follows good ideas. It's not the other way around. And you may be lucky to hump, jump on a bandwagon of good ideas and become a beneficiary of it. But the ultimate thing you are looking for is a why am I doing this? If you get that right, you will be good. The second thing you need is a set of values that drive you. One of my core ones is integrity. I have a number of them. I'll talk a bit about them as we go through this. But integrity will always keep you. It will be your true north. It will give you a sense of where you're going and why you're doing what you're doing and where your red lines are. Will you promote X or Y? You become influential and some marketer comes along, Echo Bank, anybody, and says, hey, you reach a big audience. I need you to tell them this story. You better be asking, what's the story? Because if you don't know what the story is, and you just say, well, I have a two million followers. They all listen to me. They're young people. They don't know what they're doing. I can bend their brains any which way I like. You'll end up, it will damage your brand. So, and there's something called a credibility gap. And we were just talking about this, Harriet, before we came in here. If you say too many things, you begin to create what is called dissonance. Dissonance means the way you behave and the things you say, they don't actually, they don't come together. And then you create doubt and you undermine trust. And at the end, I'll tell you about trust and why actually the first thing you're building is trust. Because when people trust you, they will follow you. Otherwise, you will have no following at all. And so these two first things I've told you are probably the most important. Why am I doing this? What are my values? And what do I want to achieve? The third one is closely linked. It's called courage. Because if you're not norming, and you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that's the norm. If you're not norming, you're going to have to walk a path that people don't normally tread. So you need courage. 
You need courage to be able to do it, to articulate yourself and organize yourself. But beyond that, you need courage of conviction. Courage of conviction is, I believe. Because often some of the things you're trying to say, they aren't empirically provable. They're actually an idea, particularly if you're moving an idea that the world can be a better place. They say, hey, what do you know about the world? Can be? We tried this one before, Second, First World War, Second World War, Ukraine, Russia, now Niger. What is it new that you're telling us? But you have to believe. And some of the people who are absolutely expert at this, so when you look to people like me to give you some ideas, also look to places where people who are powerful in conveying courage of conviction. You'll find them in a church somewhere, I'm sure. Pastors who can screech these things and make you believe things that even they themselves don't believe. <laughs> so have courage and have courage of conviction. But maybe just before that, let me just talk about, you know, who are influencers. As you all sit here, many of you, I'm sure, are already having influence. But in that space, you'll all say, I'm doing good. But you know one person's good is another person's bad. And so I always say, in, in, in any space, whether you're in banking, even in the UN, certainly in the world you live in, there'll be the good, the bad, and the ugly. And remember these things, courage of conviction, your sense of values, your sense of purpose, these are the things that are gonna enable you to figure out what is good and what is bad. And that perspective is really quite important. Because even if we take this small Niger case we're talking about right now, your idea of good here, democracy is good, is one set of ideas. There are another bunch of guys who say, listen, unless we're under a certain kind of rule, it's bad. And so your good is often somebody else's bad. And so actually part of your job is to figure out how you're navigating that space and straddling it because you're not trying to influence just those who believe in democracy. You're actually trying to convince people who don't believe in democracy. And so if you're good at singing to the choir, that term is about your ability to tell people who already believe what you're saying, that this is the truth. You're only half partially successful. It's when you get people who are not in the choir to start singing like they were in the choir. That's when you've had influence. But to do this too, you need the uh, fourth piece I'm gonna talk about is knowledge and understanding. So you need knowledge. I could tell you tomorrow, I could, you know, Echo Bank, uh, Echo Bank, maybe you consider it. I can say I'm the UN resident coordinator, the UN ambassador. I think Echo Bank is the best bank. Do I know that for a fact? Probably not. And if challenged one day by somebody, say, why did you say Echo Bank was the best? What do you know about Echo Bank? Just taking this benign, uh, not saying they're good or bad, oh, by the way. And how does your knowledge help you to not be part of the problem? Because many things that are said to be truth today are themselves disinformation. So are you just spreading someone else's disinformation? Have you thought it through? If you subscribe to it and buy it, do you buy it because you know or because someone said? And you know, we live in this continent, so some of our slangs and language can often be the same. They said, you know what they said means they, you're already externalizing, you don't really know, I don't really know. They said, they told me, they, and already you're spreading someone else's disinformation. So some people may even sit and say, ah, influencing, what the hell, it's not, it's not even hard, no be Twitter, I just grab my Twitter and I do. If you don't invest energy and knowledge in what you're trying to propagate, you'll quickly stumble and your brand will also stumble. And so closely linked to that, and maybe there's no order to some other things that I wanted to say, you therefore must be excellent. You must do your due diligence, you must understand what you're going to say. You can't just say it and say because it's a common good, therefore, or someone is paying me, so I will say it no matter how hard the evidence doesn't go in my favor. And even if you want to make a case, then at least gather your evidence together in a way that's gonna work for you. Otherwise, it won't work. 
Another principle of excellence, and I used to work for an organization, and I loved that, that value of excellence. The tagline they had was never settle, which means that excellence is not actually a destination. It's a journey, and it's a continuous, continuous journey, which means even when you get really, really good, become excellent. When you get excellent, become excellenter, if there's a word such as excellenter. So keep doing it. And embrace this complexity and noise. If you sit in my generation, although upstairs here I'm 27, by the way, just so you know, uh, you, all you see is noise. In fact, you know, first of all, it was just Facebook and then Twitter, and then along came Instagram, and then along came all the other Snapchats, which my daughter said, if I ever see you on Snapchat, I'll kill you. So I never went there. <laughs> And now we have threads, and even this morning, or yesterday I was tweeting about Kofi Annan's um, five-year anniversary of his death. And then I said, hey, but I, I spoke to those people on Twitter, or on X as it's called now, but I didn't speak to the people on threads. So you can spend a huge amount of time kind of running. So it's very complex, and there's a lot of noise out there. How do you understand that complexity? Because if you don't understand complexity, then you won't be able to navigate that. You will just be part of the noise. Part of the noise, cacophony is the word. When a band stands together and they all say, okay, play whatever is in your head, you know they're not going to rhyme. So you have to agree the song first before everybody plays to the song. So how are you going to navigate this increasing place of complexity, of divergent views, of diversity, just as I've explained? We want net zero for climate change. We want young people's voices to be heard. I want you to buy my biscuits, not their biscuits. So it doesn't really matter what you're talking about. How are you going to embrace that diversity, understand it and respect it? Because if you don't respect it, you're going to lose key parts of your audience straight away. That's really, really important. And the whole idea of ambiguity we're actually in quite a tumultuous time. Things are changing so fast, so fast that it's actually scary. We have AI that is moving so fast that actually influencing will soon be possible by artificial intelligence, by bots. Who are you? What are you going to add to that mix? So if you don't even get that ambiguity, right now I asked for somebody to write me Write me a few thoughts about this. They actually generated a full speech for me on this thing from Chad GPT on influencing. I could have read it for you, but I chose to, spoke, to speak instead. So in this exponentially changing world where there are a myriad of ideas and things happening all at once, what, how am I going to influence? What am I even going to influence about? What are the countervailing things? Can I even see over the hill, over it? Because what you see now is it's coming, it's coming like a, I don't know, an articulated lorry moving at 200 kilometers an hour. What appears not, you can't even see it. It's suddenly right here in front of you. So you have to get ahead of that and be right out there on the horizon and beyond it to see what is coming down the line. Otherwise, some of the things you say today you lose your credibility in a minute because it's overtaken by events and things that are happening. So for those of you who did think this might be an easy job, an easy way to make money, wake up, good morning. Avoid dogma. You know, I guess you know what dogma is. There are things that we know that we know that we know. There are, indeed, that if you don't breathe oxygen, you'll die. But on ideas and social norms, actually, everything is up for grabs. Everything is up for grabs. And so the moment you plant yourself in a position of dogma, there are many dogmas out there, then you will quickly become a victim of that dogma, and your influence will be built around that dogma. I know I, know I don't have a lot of time, but I do think stories are important. And I like challenging stories. So here's one. In the story of David and Goliath, 
Who was the underdog? If you believe it was David, raise your hand. David. The underdog, the one who was going to get beaten to shit. David, who believes that Goliath was the underdog? Not a single hand raised here. There's actually a book called, by Malcolm Gladwell is one of my gurus. I read his books a lot. He has a book called David and Goliath. He has an alternative story on David and Goliath. And it challenges the dogma of faith. So here goes the story. Goliath actually was struggling with a particularly grand problem. His size, it's a function of a pituitary gland, sorry, I don't know that word very well. Pituitary gland is somewhere here that causes you to grow big and large. Has a number of side effects. One is that you'll be slow and lumbering. Two is that you have poor eyesight. So now you know some facts that you didn't know before. David, by contrast, small guy, shepherd since the age of five. Fending off and fighting off uh, wolves and things to keep his sheep in one place. And over a number of years, had perfected the art of using his catapult. You see now, we now have a different war scenario. So what David decided was, I have the skill. This man, if he reaches me, he will kill me. But if I get him quickly from distance, outside his grasp, I will be able to defeat him, which is exactly what he did. He used his slingshot from a long distance, stunned the guy. The guy didn't even see the thing coming because he has an eyesight problem. He couldn't see the guy because he was still at a distance. Stunned him, he fell to the ground, slow and lumbering. The guy got there, chopped off his head. Who do you now think was the underdog? I think the underdog was Goliath. He looked like he was going to be the winner, but he didn't have any strategies and tactics, so he was going to lose that battle, unless he fought you and I, who had no particular skill or competence or anything. So dogma can often close your eyes to the possibilities. Another thing, and I'll talk a bit about it, is whether you're arrogant or you're humble, because arrogance will lead you to make assumptions, and usually Assumptions, there's one thing they say, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. The last couple of things here is, what time is it? Um, I guess I wrote that down because it's important. Because even if you have a great idea, if there's no window of opening for you to actually express your idea, it's like ramming your head against a brick wall. You will ram it from here to Jericho and you'll get nothing out of it. So knowing what time you are in, if I'm trying to tell you a story, I'm really in my 60s, even though I'm 27 here, and I don't understand what time it is for you guys, do you understand what I mean by what time it is? Then I can't resonate with you guys. I'll just be telling you stories, and often they say as you grow old, and I increasingly hear this thing, you start reminiscing, you start saying, hey, do you remember? <laughs> But really, this isn't a. So, do you know what time it is? Do you know what is important to the average Ghanaian? If you're trying to be a social media influencer in Accra, do you know what time it is for people in Wa? Do you know what time it is for people in Kumasi? Because if you don't know what time they are working on or what's going on for them, then your influence is going neither here nor there. And it's a bit like me meeting you in the car park and saying, I need a bank loan. And you go like, hey, yeah, you need a bank loan. Okay. I said, but I didn't come inside the bank to talk to the bank manager about the bank loan. I'm not going to get a bank loan. So if you don't know what time it is for the people you're trying to speak to, you won't be able to influence them. So I think these are a few things. And one of the things I will say, as I come to sort of the last piece of this, is the value of dialogue. Because often you see things from your perspective. Are you listening to what other people are saying? 
Because if you don't listen and you just talk, you're just... Somebody will often say to you, talk to the hand, because you're just, you're just spouting. And often, you'll end up in that noisy space. You don't know who you should be speaking to. You want a bank loan. If you go to the market down there and start saying, I want a bank loan, you're part of the noise, because the people who, are listening, who you need to listen to you about your bank loan aren't there. There's a representative of the government here. Um, if you want Nana Kufuado to change something, if you're not talking to his people, you're not going to bring about that change. So knowing who your audience is and really figuring that out is really important. So like I said, okay, so if, if all of this is true in whatever kind of influencing I'm doing, what are the characteristics I need? This last piece. You need confidence. Nobody communicates. You know those people who communicate with a question mark after what they say? You know, I think it may be, you're not going to sell anything to me when you're thinking that it might be correct. So you have to have confidence. And that confidence comes from all the things I told you earlier. But that confidence can't stray into arrogance. It has to stay in the realms of humility. Because if it's like everybody else is talking rubbish, you're switching people off literally by saying that. So how, and remember, the people you actually want to convince are the people who don't agree with you. Because on the things we agree, we're going to walk very easily. So it's actually the things we don't agree about that we need to be spending time doing. And it's that combination of knowing, confidence, humility, that is core to trust. Because actually, those of you who have achieved great success have a million plus followers. One of the things, your crown jewels is trust. People trust you, and they trust you for a reason. And actually, it's all these attributes that build that trust. And remember, when you come back to brand, uh, there's a curve, there's no, there's no flip chart here. But trust is built in steps like this. But when trust is broken, you go back to the beginning, and you start again. And before you get to the next step up, you have a long period to go to. So better to start humble. I've often said to people, I'm biblically in that sense, he that, is, he, that fear, he that is down need fear no fall. Stay humble. Nobody will take anything from you. You can be whoever you think you are. Just stay humble. The world will love you. And remember, too, that we are trying to create space. For this continent, particularly for young people on this continent, People don't have a voice. So be a space creator, which means you are aggregating, you're enabling people to come in, you're listening, you're hearing people's thoughts. You, you can even be such an aggregator that, in fact, none of you, if you listen well enough, you don't even have to have any original ideas yourself. You will hear those ideas coming, and you'll be able to shape them and influence people with them by creating the space, and then people will flow into that space rather than blocking the space because actually you want to be the king and even in music and in many industries where competition actually thrives you hear of collaboration so find the influencers around you who will be collaborating with you and in that prepare for opposition i often say to young people there are three skills you need to actually survive the first is knowledge if you have knowledge, if you don't have knowledge, in this economy that we live in now, you're literally wasting time because knowledge is the key. The second thing you need is networks. So if you're busy plugging people out, you're not going to build a network. And the third thing you need is resilience. You will not succeed most of the time. But actually, that's not failure, that's learning. You will hear all those cliche things, but you will learn a lot from just listening to opposition because actually that's how you hone your thoughts and overcome objection. If you do sales force 101, the fir first part of it is how to overcome objection. I want to sell you this, but I don't have money. Okay, let me show you how you have money. Uh, but I don't like the product. Okay, let me tell you why the product is really good. So build the capacity to deal with opposition because it's important. Be disciplined. They say the bridge to success 
is discipline. This is not going to be easy work. You may be a natural, you have brilliant ideas, but you still need to be disciplined in the way that you deliver those ideas. Three key things about how you must be. Always inspiring, always, always inspiring, because people respond better to inspiration than they do to threat. Carrot and stick, always the carrot. Be empathetic. Empathy requires you to understand the perspective of another person. And some of the most effective tools we have today, the mobile phone, the existence of a screen. I don't know, you must have heard of human-centered design. If you haven't, you need to understand human-centered design. It is that I'm designing something that works for who I'm designing it for. And so you test, and you hear, and you take feedback, and you improve. And that's how the best things in life are built. And so have that approach to it. And sometimes express it as tough love. You know, the, 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 the tweet I just shared, Joaba obviously does tell people, I block you. Uh, because the noise is too much and it actually distracts. So not every person, not every opposition is good for you. So figure out how to issue some tough love sometimes because some of the best, best ideas will not come because you're loved. They'll come because actually you're making a point but actually, it's a difficult pill for people to swallow. Those of you who are born in the right generation, uh, there's something called resuchin to cure malaria, quinine, the most ghastly stuff you can ever taste in this life. And doctors made it really bad. They turned it into a syrup. So as a young child, you had to swallow this dastardly syrup, but it made you better in the long run. So learn to have tough love. I've talked about um, uh, integrity. We live in a world of fake news. AI is making it impossible now to even discern what is true from what is not true. Um, and so don't be a spreader of fake news. Don't be a spreader of disinformation. Sitting closely behind that and really dangerously is hate speech that will ultimately cause harm. And that's a really important thing not to be, not to be part of. So do no harm. Whether you're selling Nespresso, be honest about it. Chimamanda, in one of her, Chimamanda Adichie says, if you tell me only part of the truth, you are actually telling me a lie. Until I know the whole truth, then I know it's true. So if you're selling a product, these are the upsides, these are the downsides. Those of you who watch American ads, you know the downsides. They go run through it. They find somebody who can speak really fast. And he says, oh, and this may kill you, and this may do this, and this may do this, and it's approved by the FDA, really slowly. <laughs> so learn, learn how to be honest in what you say. Take a long-term view about influencing, because it's such a powerful thing. You can be the change makers of the world. And so are you going to be the change makers for good, or the change makers who damage the world? and have an entrepreneurial mindset. I keep saying this, there is no space in which an entrepreneurial mindset does not exist. You have to be entrepreneurial to figure out, for those of you who do this professionally, how are my income streams going to happen? How am I going to monetize this? While holding on to all these values and principles that I've just espoused here, you're gonna need to be a super navigator and entrepreneurial in your style and your approach. So I guess those are the thoughts I had. Um, and remember that in everything that people do, if you choose this as a career or it's your hobby, that at the end of the day, you need to be successful, but you also need to be, take care of you as a person because all of this that I've told you, if you really do it properly, you're going to be busy all day long. So you need to stop, you need to pause, you need to come up for air. You need to remember not to take yourself too seriously every single time and actually learn to have fun and relax. And I wish you the best on your journey as you go. Thank you very much.